was a good spill. <laughs> we'll get her down. <laughs> One way or another. We'll get this straightened out. But I'm thrilled to be able to sit on my porch and look out and see blossoms. This tree over here is just blossomed out with white blossoms and man, I'm looking around and hummingbird our hummingbird feeder finally got a hummingbird. Of course it's after we planted some flowers around it. <laughs> so we got a chance to see the hummingbird. And it's just another sign that, you know, God is with us, that God has blessed us. And, you know, that's kind of what I enjoy about my mornings is that I really get the honor and the privilege, you know, to get up early in the morning, you know, and to take the time to ask Jesus how he's doing today. You know, I get a chance to visit with him and to say, hey, Lord, how are you doing? How are things going on your side of the coin? Because I know how they're going on my side. You know, I can see it all around me. But how are things going in your department? You know, how's how's heaven and how you doing on my mansion, you know, or in this case, my little cottage by the little river, you know, with just a little grapevine, you know, a little tree, and that's all I want, a little garden. <laughs> For a thousand years, I plan on, like, you know, camping out. <laughs> I don't know about you, but me, I kind of enjoy that. You know, waking up in the morning and taking the time to talk to Jesus, you know, and really just relate to Him, you know, and it's like, Boy, you know, I can't imagine what it would be like in heaven for him as he's waiting to bring us home, you know, to be with him. I mean, man, that kind of makes me want to get up in the morning and find out, hey, are we any closer? How's things going? Is it time yet? Because I like spending time with Jesus because it seems like he's always got something good to say, you know. I mean... I don't know about you, but my devotionals always seem to inspire me. It's not that they're always the power of positive thinking, because, frankly, my devotionals sometimes tell me some things I need to do. But whenever I take the time to kind of like, you know, you know what it is. Kick back. Watch the sunrise. Be still and let my Father in Heaven speak. Well, then I can look around and see my hummingbird busy with the blossoms, flitting from blossom to blossom, sniffing here and snorkeling there and taking the nectar from one blossom to another and sharing that blossom, you know, that, that wondrous fruit of the Spirit of God, you know, as He's caused it to grow in a plant and to go from plant to plant with the good news. Are you like that? Are you a hummingbird today? Or are you just kind of like a bullfrog, you know? Kind of like, you know, croaking and stoking and just kind of letting the world know what's wrong with it, you know? Kind of like, hey, you know, we need to tell them to repent. Or, hey, you know, the world's coming to an end. Or, you know what? Things are going wrong. Me? Call me strange, but... I kind of like, you know, what's happening in the world. I kind of enjoy, you know, the fact that things aren't perfect. I kind of like, you know, letting God reveal how those imperfections are working out perfection in me. That I get to choose which way I'll go. Am I going to let the imperfections, you know, kind of like lead me down that path of telling everyone what's wrong with the world? Or can I look around and see the beauty and the wonder that God has unveiled in this perfect sunrise as the light comes streaming over the mountain, as it begins to illuminate the darkness and cause it to flee? I think, God, take that out of me. Take away all darkness that's within, that I might shine like the light of the sun as you brought it over the mountain to illuminate the world of who you are. Oh, what a privilege, what an honor, what a joy, really, to bring Jesus into a situation where, frankly, sometimes I see other people maybe not quite so happy about it. They get up in the morning and they're kind of, you know, 
torqued and twittered and turked and whatever it is, jerked and jabbing and stabbing and kind of over the weekend I, I heard the same thing, you know, people were like bad mouthing this person and that person and then all of a sudden God came on the scene. It was like a bolt of lightning came out of nowhere. It was like suddenly the sunrise and the light of his presence came upon a situation and he revealed oh, people that were pointing fingers were wrong. They had made a mistake. They had attacked a man of God. They had said and done things that had revealed where their heart was and how dark it was. And they were all against this man of God that had been used mightily by the Lord. And so the Lord in his timing finally at one point in time decided, enough! And he brought in his light to the situation and revealed it to everyone. And then it was like, oh no! They boo-booed. They made a mistake. They failed God in living up to what God wants us to do. Did you know that in Proverbs it says that some people, they can't go to sleep except that they tear somebody down. It says their feet run as fast as they can to set snares and traps and pits and to tear someone down and to argue with them or to cause division or to cause strife because that's what they live for. That's how they hype themselves up. That's how they wind up on coffee. You know, that's how they amp themselves up on, you know, kind of like power drinks. You know, they get off on getting on someone's case. Really. Proverbs says that. And you know some people like that. I mean, they got to go out and they got to protest at a funeral home? That's not the gospel. They got to protest, you know, anything they can to get news and views and people commenting on them because they got to have people watching them. I'm right just because I'm telling you what's wrong. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I don't need to, you know, kind of like be told what's wrong. You are like me. You kind of can look around and see what's wrong, you know. You don't have any problem with that one. It's like, hey, you know what? Even some of my own attitudes sometimes are wrong. <laughs> I mean, that's obvious, you know. It's kind of like wearing dirt on your face. You know how you get a little smudge here, you know, or if you're a woman, you get a little makeup smudge here, you know, and you got, ooh, we got to fix that because <laughs> it stands out, you know, and that's kind of like what happens when you get dirt on your face, you know, you gotta wash it off. Well, that's kind of what doing devotions is, kind of washing you up and cleaning you up and setting you in the right direction, the right attitude, because frankly, if you're running around tearing down, you got dirt on your face, you know, you got blood on your nose because you may have fallen down too hard, and maybe there's a little blood trickle coming out of your nose, you know, and you need to wipe that up, you know, kind of clean it up, you know. You know what I mean? Because it don't look so good on you. But, man, when you got something good to say, when you got some good news, like, hey, check out the sunrise, man. Isn't that awesome what God has done? Hey, check out the blossoms. Wow, the tree is full of light blossoms or cherry blossoms. And look at the birds, man. They're like in heaven, seventh heaven. They're like, ooh, blossoms. Ooh, let's go check it out. And they're flying and flitting from branch to branch, you know, just enjoying what God has blessed them with at this time of year. Nice! Unless you're in the snow. And it's like, well, it'll come. <laughs> you don't have to whine about the snow. The snow covers up all kinds of man's inventions and it makes it all look nice and smooth. <laughs> That's God's way of saying, hey, you know what? You can have creation, you know, your way, but I like creation my way and I'll just cover it all up with snow. <laughs> so there's always a way to look at it. I mean, you know, if you really want to look at what's wrong with the world, you know, you can be like those people who, when they wake up, they are not content and they are not going to bed until they have found someone to pick on, until they have found someone to tear down, until they have gone out and preached like somebody told me, they said, you know, we don't want that gospel that's watered down. And I went, I didn't know that the gospel was watered down. I know that there's a lot of people that water down themselves because they dilute their message with all this hate. When Jesus said, come unto me all ye that are heavy laden and I will give you rest. When somebody tells me that somehow the gospel doesn't have the teeth, I think, well, 
I didn't know gospel had teeth. I thought that was a lion, you know, out there roaring as though he were somebody important, you know, making him sound like he's really got something important to say. You know, and he's warning everyone, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. And nobody comes, you know, except the ones that are already saved. And then they only come because they want to point the fingers too. So they want to tear down rather than build up. But you know, when I listen to the birds sing, when I watch a hummingbird feed, when I see little children delight to see their parents, and they just giggle and laugh, you know, little babies when they just see their mama coming, you know, and they're like, and they just light up. That's the way I feel when I get a chance to run out here in the morning and say, God, let's share Jesus. <laughs> Let's inspire someone today. Let's tell them the right way to go instead of the wrong way to be. Because anybody can be wrong. But how to go the right way is a choice you and I make. So I don't know about you, but man, I'm kind of digging this sunrise. I'm kind of loving this day. It's kind of like the day the Lord's made for me. And I'm kind of excited to see what he's got to do and how he's going to use me or I'm going to be confused although somehow I doubt it <laughs> I kind of like you know avoiding you know falling off cliffs and jumping over you know like two-story buildings because when the Lord leads me he takes care of me death and life are in the power of the tongue and they who indulge in it shall eat the fruit of it for death or for life if we ride to work with somebody and gossip about how our boss and talk about how we hate our job and what a stupid place it is, we will have a bad day. Maybe that sounds obvious, but do you realize that you're doing it? The Bible says a man's moral self shall be filled with the fruit of his mouth and with the consequence of his words he must be satisfied, whether for good or evil, from Proverbs 18.20. Clearly, we will have to eat our words, so we need to talk about the right things to be happy. If we murmur and gossip, we will eat the fruit of death. But if we speak life, or if we talk about those things that are profitable to our soul to lift us up and to enjoy life, then we will eat the fruit of the Spirit. Peace, love, joy, meekness, kindness, temperance, gentleness. From Matthew 12, 37. Choose which kind of fruit you're going to eat today. Now you can, you know, quite frankly, go to the store, you know, honestly, on your way to work, and you can look at a fruit stand, you know, and if you want to pick that kind of like, you know, rotted fruit that kind of has overripe, you know, and it's sitting there with all the other fruit, you know, there's this plump fruit, you know, and it's kind of like looks juicy and mm, you just want to bite into it, you know, and get it all over your face and it's delicious and it's sweet to the taste and it's like, mmm, all the oxidants are going in and they're doing their job and, you know, it's just, man, it's just so good that you got to get a towel and wipe your face off. Or you could pick that kind of like overripe fruit, you know, it's been there like maybe two weeks too long and it's kind of rotted. And you could, you know, kind of like look at it and go, well, it looks like something's maybe wrong with it. And bite into it. And then spit it out. Because it's bitter. It's gotten, the sugars in it have gone all sour, you know, and it's no longer good to be eaten. It's like peeling. Is that the way God sees your life today? Pity. Or, oh man, I want to taste and see that the Lord is good. And God wants to taste and see that you are in His will. Because, frankly, I think He might spit you out if you're not having the peace, the love, and the joy that God would desire for you to share today. Because I don't want to hear about your gospel of tearing people down. Because that's what all those people that really kind of, according to Proverbs, can't wait to do. But I want to hear about what you got positive to say today. Because frankly, I kind of like biting into things and people that, you know, kind of have something good for me to hear. You know, because I like, you know, having my ears kind of blessed by the music of the day. By the joy that comes my way by the love of God that is shed abroad in all our hearts 
as God prepares the day for you and I.